so I don't know if this might change your mind, uh, but Rob and Harry have decided to play Hashashin, whereas Torridge Mistress for the Knights Templar. Uh, so, you know, that won't have consequences. Um, I was actually going to go in the direction of not being on either Templar or other sides in the Eminent Crusades. I was going to be going with playing a random person of Hebrew origin. Sounds good. Or at least what she's doing around there is she's a professional entertainer. She might not even be freeborn by the standards of the era. It works for a kitty. Okay. okay. Uh, so let's start with a couple revisions to the character sheet to sort of reflect, uh, you know, your fairy soul is the same, but you have a new body. Uh, so the first thing is you can mix and match and respend all of your attribute dots. So read just however you like. I'm actually pretty... Okay Obviously, you're still going to have one in each category. Yeah, I had to be taught that because I didn't know. So now <laughs> my original character sheet has a little green circle that I added to each column. Although it's funny that my dice rolls actually got worse when my test pools got bigger. Yeah, dice statistics are really weird like that. Okay. So I'm copying it out as I talk, so you may be seeing me looking down from the camera, but that would mean three total physicals, including my freebie, five dexterity, because cat, one stamina, two charisma, three manipulation, and three appearance. Does that sound like a cat to you? Yep. And then the last uh, thing... I'm sorry? The last thing was mentals, which would be one intelligence, because cat, um, but three perception and two wits. Mm -hmm. Does that... That sounds about right. Now, what I wanted to look at is what skill gaps and talent skills and knowledge the group was missing. Yeah, so uh, you can do the same thing about reassigning your uh, skills dots. Okay. When last I created a character, I'd given her a pile of alertness, which makes sense for a cat, and I might leave athletics where it is or beef it up, because Tumblr, she has mm -hmm. brawl, empathy, intimidation, kenning, streetwise, subterfuge, those are all her talents, then under skills, animal ken, crafts, larceny, melee, stealth, survival, and then... Um, She's got a point of knowledge and three points of investigation, one point of academics, and one point of brain air. Do any of those sound like they should go away? Like, for example, a point, extra points of um, streetwise since we're doing a city adventure? Yeah, I, I think a little extra streetwise would be good. Uh, athletics, definitely, if you're going to be, be a tumbler. Uh, possibly also expression uh, or performance. Yes, those both make a lot of sense given the context she's in. Is expression under talent, skills, or knowledge? Expression is a talent, uh, performance is a skill. Now, for this particular environment, um, I'm trying to figure out what to get rid of. I'm thinking that she's probably not going to need crafts in this new environment because she's got her performance. So that frees up one dot. Mm -hmm. And am I just mixing that? Uh, keep in mind that... I'm sorry? I forget what the exact totals for starting dots were because I forget what I spent on otherwise. Yeah, don't worry about it. Um... And also, you will have uh, 15 XP to play with at the very end, in addition to any other uh, unspent XP that you have. Well, I don't remember spending any XP to begin with. Uh, okay, I'm very bad about assigning XP. Uh, you should have 10. Uh, that's what I gave Robin Tori. 
So I have a total of 25 XP. That's from Eek. last season plus... Um, so um, let's get rid of crafts. Um, I'm wondering about keeping academics or not. If you hear any pots and pans clanking in the background, it's because um, multiple cities in Canada have decided at 7 o'clock to do a make clapping and pots banging and stuff in honor of healthcare workers. Oh. Yes. It had confused me at the time, since usually people banging pots is a sign of protest that they've been confined to their house by, um, like, martial law. But apparently this thing had been adapted to, we're protesting the plague, not the actual rules saying, please stay in your house, we don't have a good reason to leave. Yeah, uh, I, I've seen videos of people doing that uh, in New York and San Francisco. I don't think Los Angeles will do it because we're just too spread out. Mm -hmm. We'll think of something. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing that I'm probably going to end up fixing is my arts and realms and backgrounds, because I feel like that never came together in a way that worked quite well for what I was trying to do, but I can get there when I get there. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, just so I know when you think your skills are up to par for, um, you know, where you want them. Do you remember what the initial base points you got were? I believe it's 1175, but I mean, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, I'm not going to be a huge stickler for that kind of math. Okay, well, I'm just using that as my particular way of keeping track of it. Okie dokie. Because that also tells me what I'm working with, because I clearly had bought an extra point in some of these. Like, I clearly bought an additional investigation to round that out or something. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's eleven seven five. Do I, um, Tori? Do you have gray mare on your sheet? I do. Then I can probably get rid of that. One of the things I wanted to avoid was duplication because, as much as it's nice to have a test pool of someone else who could do things for you. You know, I'm otherwise pretty okay with my sheet, other than getting rid of um, survival, because I don't see it coming up much. Okay. Yeah, survival is a very outdoorsy sort of skill. I Street rise would probably be what you would need in this setting. Yeah, and I have... Well, I actually had the equivalent amount of points in streetwise and survival to start with, and I have two points of streetwise. Um, we'll get to the rest of the point spending um, stage. But yeah, um, three dots for performance sounds about right for a professional performer or more. Three sounds good for, uh, you know, this is what you make your living at. Yeah. And um, then um, maybe three points of athletics. And then I've got my natural gift, um, which was one of my merits. I'm going to keep my merits um, the same. Those were perfect balance, three. And then the flaws, allergy and curiosity. Okay. Um, so I'm pretty much going to keep things the way they are. I just gave myself a point of expression. And um, can you remind me what Kenning does again? Uh, Kenning is uh, understanding magic. I'm going to leave Kenning just for folksy purposes. Okay. But otherwise, I'm removing a lot of stuff, and I'm leaving a dot of knowledge, I think. Or does knowledge basically count as book smarts completely? And would it make sense to have my character unable to read? Um, yeah. If you're a tumbler, if you're sort of like a street performer, uh, there really isn't a reason for you to have gone to school. Yeah, she never or had a tutor education. So I am going to niche that and niche academics um although that gives me more points than i expected can you remind me what grammary does again 
Uh, Grammary is changeling magic in specific. Okay, so I'm going to keep Grammary and I'm going to plunk those um, points I got rid of into Grammary instead. So no more academics, no more knowledge, because this is not a book smart person. No more crafts, no more survival. Um, add expression, add performance, and that looks about right, at least for now. Now, I don't necessarily think it was helpful to have Dragon's Ire, Wayfa Wayfair, and then have my realm spread out between actor, nature, scene, um, scene, and prop the way I did. Should I be having a more concentrated scope? I wasn't sure I ever really understood that magic. Yeah, so uh, the best way to sort of understand how Changeling magic works is uh, it, you, it started in first edition Changeling as a card game. Mm -hmm. So you as a player would have a hand of specific cards that were all different arts and realms, and so you would play them uh, with each other to sort of get the effect that you wanted. So you sort of had to be creative because you could only use what you had in your hand. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you think of them like, all right, uh, my art is a card that I'm playing, and the realm is the card I'm playing to affect that is how it works. Okay, so I might as well just leave them that way since a little bit of Wayfair with one's tumbling is not a bad idea. I'm leaving Larceny because I don't think that someone in her profession would necessarily be perfectly honest and besides, um, it might be useful to escape. And I think I will keep Dreamers and Remembrances the way they are. Does that sound about right for a cat remembering vaguely its other lives? Yes. Uh, so uh, how it works for backgrounds, I'm letting you refund all the points you want and rebuy them up because backgrounds uh, really strongly are meant to represent your your mortal life and what you have in this particular incarnation uh whereas um, arts and realms are pretty static because that uh is part of your fairy soul and that goes with you for each incarnation okay so it doesn't look like i needed to actually change much on this sheet because keeping the same nature nurture merits and flaws um yes. oh uh, you can change your court and your theming if you'd like um i think she was perfectly happy with her court in her last life so she's probably in this one too um as much as it would entertain me to play an entertainer whose main goal is to destroy hope <laughs> Although, given the setting and what we're probably going to have happen to this city, it might suit her just dandy. We'll see when we get there. Well, what do you guys want to deal with? Do you want to deal with um, Helper Kitty, um, who tries to be helpful, or Rebel Kitty, who's trying to burn this motherfucker down? Pardon my language, I'm a Canadian. You're the guys who have to put up with my antics. Um, I feel... I up to you seriously okay well let's just keep things the same way they are and wait until she has a major my hopes and dreams were destroyed in front of me and then she can do a flip that, that seems appropriate good. character growth um i'm sure it'll inevitably happen remembrances is remembering your past lives right yes i'm gonna leave two because that sounds plausible because of her being like oh yes i have like nine lives nine total yeah mm -hmm. and uh, saying as how you haven't really made a whole lot of changes on your sheet, it's sort of, uh, you know, it makes sense that you have a really strong connection to your yeah. past life. She isn't really being asked to live much more differently than she already is, other than more glitter um, and less chamber pots. And I'm going to keep Dreamers at three, because I think it's pretty plausible that um, someone who works as an entertainer has access to a lot of other creative people to snack on. Definitely. Uh, also, uh, you know, fans, audiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I'll be going with the routine that part of what she sells in her act is basically, I'm a lazy kitty and everything I'm doing looks perfectly effortless because that's the essence of what a puka is. Yeah. You could also do the, um, you know, uh, take a prat fall and then do the cat thing of, I'm meant to do that. Yes, that too. When it's comedy. Depends on the audience. Read the room. Yes. Yes. So it sounds like I'm pretty much good to go. Awesome. Uh, seeming, are you going to keep your seeming? Um, my physical appearance? Uh, what, uh, whether you are childling, wilder, or grump. 
I think she's still more or less Wilder because the way that I'd set it up, because Wilder lets you pick either or, she was as if Changeling, and I think she's going to appear pretty much the same as when you encounter her, except she's not a tiny, dirty Welsh girl. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, XP? What XP would you like to spend? Um, 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 I think I'd like to be better at performance. How much does it cost to spend on performance now? Uh, let's see. There is a chart. Yep, 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 yep. I really do need to get a physical copy of the book eventually. I do have it on my machine, but I'm also using my machine to stream on, which... Yes. Uh, so it is current rating times two for abilities. So that would mean the fourth dot would cost me eight. Remember it so I can remember it so I can be up to performance four. Uh, uh, current rating, current rating. So oh, you current rating. So that would be six. So maybe performance four, and then does anyone else have a particular amount of streetwise? Uh, I have a beautiful one streetwise. Then. I am going to buy some additional Streetwise, because that seems like something the group is missing, and since I do seem to be the party thief, it makes sense if I get a little more. Well, all right, Miss Jive talking. <laughs> Did you just break right now, Fanda? Don't try to hide that smile and that laugh. That was a hilarious joke. Thank you, Storyteller. You heard the snort. Thank you. And you know, a snort means that was a that was a real joke. Exactly. I had no complaints whatsoever about your humor. So I've spent ten. Um, let's bump myself up to. Um, and let's give myself an um, 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 an additional point of larceny. So I'm a better thief now. I really feel like I should bump up investigation because it's the thing that I kept getting wrong when I'm like, I'll follow them. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah. Three dots in that. It just never got better. And then I've got one floating XP point, which I'm not really worried about. Yeah, you can totally yeah. bank that. Yep. Yeah. Same thing here. So, yeah. Okay. Basically... Awesome. I'm sorry? Ready to go. Ruth and Guten. I think we're all ready to yes. do whatever else. Cool. All right. That's a really cool thing, Panda. Anyway, uh, so, you know, let's uh, do some world building. So, as mm -hmm. uh, some quick uh, explanation. Uh, I posted a map in chat, uh, and I will put it in a Twitch stream right now so people can sort of follow along. Uh, so this is mm -hmm. sort of what the city looks like right now. Uh, it's on a peninsula, and it's where two big bodies of water meet, the Sea of Marmara and the Black Sea, which means it's uh, quite hard to attack Constantinople by water because you've got all these weird currents. Uh, and then the land part of the city is protected by three layers of very thick, very tall walls. They're very good at what they do. The city has so far not yet been taken. It is currently ruled by Alexios III Angelos. Uh, who ascended the throne when he deposed and blinded and imprisoned his little brother. As Fancy. you do. Uh, the former emperor, Isaac, is currently held prisoner somewhere in the palace, uh, along with one of his sons, also named Alexios. Uh, there is some rising tension. And by rising, I mean, you know, we're 200 years away from his schism. Uh, as the eastern and western churches have sort of split apart, uh, part of this is over power. It's, you know, who gets to 
make decisions for all of Christendom? Is it the Pope in Rome? Is it the Patriarch in Constantinople? Uh, obviously, we know what Constantinople thinks about this. Uh, it is not making them any friends in Rome. Exacerbating tensions is the common practice of uh, venerating icons, which are sort of uh, painted pictures or sculptures of saints, of the apostles, of important figures uh, in Christian theology. And so some Christians look at this icon veneration and they say that it's idol worship and therefore you shouldn't be doing it. Whereas the people who do venerate the icons say you know, it is veneration, it's not worship, we're meditating, it helps us. Uh, so the fact that many people in Constantinople really adore and revere their icons is also exacerbating tension. Uh, we've got a couple really nice landmarks in here. There's the Hagia Sophia, which is uh, where the Eastern Orthodox Patriarch. Uh, it's sort of like St. Peter's Basilica right now for Constantinople. Uh, next to that is the Hagia Irene, uh, smaller, but still pretty venerated. And then you've got the Hippodrome, which is where everyone goes to watch the chariot races, the national pastime of Constantinople. So uh, let's start by talking about, uh, you know, where do you guys live? Do you live in a nice district? Do you live in a crowded district? Do you live near the palace? Do you live near the walls? Nikkei has been doing very well for herself, but where she lives is entirely where she's allowed to live. So she's been attempting to get some better patrons and clients for her act, but she doesn't come from a quality fancy background with um, good quality people. Just a little streetwise. Okay. Uh, so in the future, Constantinople is going to be divided up into districts uh, based almost entirely on religion. At this point, pretty much everybody is a Christian. Uh, and Perfect. you just have, like, small Jewish enclaves. Yes. I'm going to go with... Um she's attached to a group of performers that someone is sending out as the manager of this group and quite often where she sleeps is where the party that hired her happened after the guests have all passed out <laughs> Would that okay work? so you're sort of like an urban nomad yes very much the um wandering around um, artist. Her territory at this particular point is very small and very much that she scraps with other artist groups. Okay. Neat. Uh, Harry, Tori, Rob, what about you? Where do you guys Rob live? and I probably have a safe house somewhere that okay. we operate out of. There you go. Probably in a poorer district. I'm at. He's my mentor. Yep. He's my buddy wherever I go. I'm teaching you how to kill people. <laughs> stabby, stabby, stabby. So, yeah. So, I would assume that we are close to, we would be close to the, um, like, in some type of, like, training house close to the, what, close to the chariots? Um, uh, probably in a poor around, area, uh, though, right? Uh, like, it'd be I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, was said, that Harry? He said, prob he said probably, probably in a poor, poor area. area. Just okay. Because, but it, you know, we're assassins. We're not exactly incredibly wealthy. And it's easier to lay low when in that area. They won't notice foreigners but like yet it, us so much. But yet again, though, with that, this all depends on where where in time we are. Because where is it, like a uh, storyteller, or is it uh, right now we're in like the the ascension of uh, the assassins? Have we as been established for a couple of years? Or is it close to like the end of the assassin's reign? Uh, probably, you... this probably sh oh, I'm sorry, continue. Uh, yeah, so the Hashashi has been well established by now. Okay, so we ha so then we should just, all right, with that then, Harry, where do you think we should be? Because literally that if we've been established, that means that we have 
well uh we have a lot of influence throughout the city we probably do the the concern that i would have is like with discrepancy the hashashin despite their power and influence are also like they're a, they're a criminal organization they're incredibly sought after by the authorities because you know they have a tendency of killing important people so well, but they've held what? strong so what how about this how about mm -hmm. Uh, where you live is in a poor district, and the facade is very much of a tenement. Yes. But once you get inside, you know, it's obvious, oh, poor yeah, people don't like live here. It's like, yeah, it's like an assassin okay. trading hideout slash. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Cool. Okay, cool. And the, the poor district would be uh, where, so, uh, where on this map would be closer to the top. Probably near the. I mean, if I know anything Closest about bottom, planning and how be? cities developed in medieval times, probably near um, the dockyards, especially. Um, the on the other side, where the rubble. lighthouse is not, perhaps. Yes. Yeah. So the if it's on the other side. Yeah. So if you look uh, at the map, you can sort of see where it's denser, mostly along the eastern side. And so the denser areas yeah, are like where the, the people water. live, you know, really close together. Gotcha. Okay, so we're around there. Gotcha. Cool. That's where we're at. Okay, how about you, Tori? Um, wherever the Knights of Templar live is where I live. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, then Sorry. let's put you near the palace. Trying to see where the palace is at. Is that on the southern tip? Well, it's the lighthouse. Yeah, it's it's right next to the lighthouse on the um, southwest of the map. See it? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's it's this big complex where uh, you know you can see each individual roof and you can see the big courtyards. Uh, and so probably in that neighborhood, that's where you'd have your lodge house and your barracks and all everything you need to be the lodge mistress. Okay. So, uh, you know, do you think of it as like a, a nice house or do you have any sort of, um, preferences? For where you, where and how your character lives, Tori. Um, I would say that it's relatively a nice house. Um, okay. I am a she. I would care about that stuff. That's true. So many things to steal. I mean, what a lovely home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Let's talk a little bit about the Freehold. So this is where all the changelings in the city, uh, you know, your point of socialization, where you go to hang out with each other. Are we getting off the Hippodrome? Yeah. That's, why not? Chariot races, you know, socializing all over. You have taverns, you have Even wine that. cellars, you have baths. Mixers yeah. of all sorts of weird people, so no one's going to think it at all peculiar that um, the Lodge Mistress of the Knights Templar, um, a couple yeah. of suspiciously stabby types, and a gymnast all decide to go into the same house. Yeah, so like one of the things to know about the Hippodrome is you know, you sort of look at American culture and you look at how, you know, people are fans of football and basketball and baseball. And, you know, it's, it's always like something going on in the news. And so you take all of that sports fandom and it's just distilled down into chariot racing. And so you've got two teams uh, and everybody picks their team it's a big rivalry and so uh yeah the hippodrome is one of the biggest points of non-religious 
culture, shared culture for the uh, residents of Constantinople. So. Sounds tasty. Yeah, and so Rob, you were saying that you wanted the Freehold to be a tavern? Uh, um, I, well, no, because I was thinking that the Freehold would have, because it's if the Freehold is going to be like literally where the Hippodrome is, I would think that it would have taverns and um, marketplaces around around the Hippodrome, and that, that would be a, a great meeting place for all of us to come because it's literally where the entire city comes to like let loose and enjoy the enjoy uh, entertainment so that would be a great place for like all our characters to meet that's why i was like ooh, tablets and shops and all that that actually makes perfect place i think the idea was where okay. we were going to stick the bale fire our magical food pot yes uh and so <laughs> my uh it's not like the, the street and you're like Oh, there's the freehold. Uh, it's you walking down the street, and you're like, "Oh, that's that's a tavern. That's a botanical garden. Uh, that also happens to be a freehold." All right, and what what is what particular is uh, particularly is the use for the freehold? Uh, so uh, Panda sort of mentioned the bale fire, and the bale fire is sort of like this source of magical energy. It just radiates glamour. Like, uh, yeah, think of it as like a light bulb. And the closer you stand in the light bulb's light, the more glamour you get. Wouldn't it make and sense so for these... it to be in the lighthouse? Oh, that... <laughs> I'm sorry? Oh, Wouldn't it make well, sense for it to be would... in the lighthouse? Oh, that's wonderfully terrible. I want it. Okay. I was going to no say gonna put that fire out. I mean, it might be a little like weird. The... For I live there. Do it. Do the lineup. Okay. Sure. Uh, and so, uh, to finish answering your question, Rob, the other point of the freehold is it's sort of like the fairy clubhouse. Uh, it is where uh, changelings come together and discuss, you know, uh, laws and uh, the leaders make edicts and just for you to come have a chance to hang out with other changelings, people who sort of understand what and who you yeah. are. The lighthouse makes sense because it okay. could be fortified as well with magic, just in case, just um, for protection. So, and you have good grounds to suddenly announce that a bunch of regular people can't come in. Oh snap! Hashtag you're not allowed. That's basically to where I live, right? Um, you would be thereabouts there, yes, because the palace is nearby as well. Yeah. Yep. It's like you're like half a mile, no, like a mile and a half away from my lighthouse, from where you live, Tori. So it's like basically half a galleon's chariot away. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, at least I tried. You know what I'm saying? Harry, I hope you get your accent down. By the way, I'm working on it. It's 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 coming along. No samples. No sample. Not okay. yet. You'll have to wait. Fair enough. Story building. Continue. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the next question. Uh, so you've got this freehold in the lighthouse. Uh, so it's busy, probably a little tricky for, you know, a random tumbler to access the lighthouse, but your she friend can probably pull the little strings and ensure you have access when you need it. So, uh, the next thing is who are your leaders? So right now it is traditional for she to rule each freehold. They insist that they were given the right to rule by the true fae of Arcadia. Uh, you know, and they've got the magic power to back up those assertions. And so what kind of she leader do you guys want to see? 
Should he be benevolent? Should he be tyrannical? Should he be incompetent? Tyrannical despot! Tyrannical despot! Say, tyrannical despot! Tyr yes, I, <laughs> okay. I vote for tyrannical. Let's spice this baby up, baby. Tyrannical. I'm talking about, like, oof, the worst. Just the worst. Just, yeah. Just, like, literally put all of the worst, like, like, yeah, the fuck to it when you want to, when you see, like, you can't even hear his name because he's like Voldemort status. That, that's how bad. Let's excite this baby. Woo! I'm hype. Sorry. I'm okay, hyped. well, the We're next brother, question baby. is Woo! what is your personal relationship to this guy? Why don't we let the she go first? Individual. So, yeah, go for it, Tori. Um, I would say I am a loyal servant of him, obviously. Okay. Are, uh, do we want to give this guy a name? Something Greek? <laughs> something, something Greek. Oh, no. Constantinopolis, uh, Yossi. Constantinopolis, that's too good. Oh, jeez. I mean, no. uh, we, we could name him Constantine. That works. Oh, oh too easy. Okay. I liked it. I don't know, Alexander Constantine could work. Yeah, you know what? When? Not. Nah, nah, dash anybody's dreams. Constantine it is. Sure, yeah, let's do Constantine. This is the world of the chief. The Greek word for cruel is for skleros. I, I was actually going to recommend the, uh, the name for nightmare. In in Greek. Oh, what's that? I I totally forgot. Uh, <laughs> I, I, know, I, I have forgot. No idea. I, hold on, I didn't look at it. Nightmare in Greek. Would he be unsully? Uh, yeah. I mean, that would make sense, but he could also be silly and cruel and tyrannical. Uh, Ephelatis. Okay. How do you guys that like that as a name? For Nightmare. But if you watch 300, the dude that had the haunch back, that was his name too. His He was named for Nightmare. That was the whole, oh man, I can't wait till we go into, I'm going to shut up. I just love traveling through He could favorite. be Thiele in the all shall love me and despair kind of I rule with an iron fist, law and order. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Like, so, love so... me or die. Yeah. But also very rigid in the sorts of art he'll accept, accepts a very courtly manner only. Tori's character, of course, thrives in this environment because she's clever. <laughs> even if she's able. I'm not sure we're setting you two up very well, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of this guy. Uh, we're good. Don't worry about I'm going to have beef with him. Apparently, I'm going to have beef with this guy. Okay, so what's the nature of the beef? Um, I probably don't like being told what to do, or I don't like tyrannical despots in general. I've maybe, maybe made a career out of killing them. <laughs> so... <laughs> and... and... I would, uh, on my part, going on from last week's um, storyline, basically, I don't like this king for the simple reason that he, I, he basically could have saved my mother and father, but apparently, okay. he is the one that ex uh, executed my mother and father. So I am on the hunt to find that man that executed him, then to execute him. Well, okay. So uh, just to clarify. Uh... Are you saying that the the freehold leader, um, the the duke, I guess, uh, are you saying that you already know that he is responsible for your parents' death? Yes, because I was just a young child when it all right. happened, and that's why I was waiting for the right age that I can become, quote unquote, a man to start avenging my, uh, my uh, start avenging my parents. But I am okay. a goose. So you want to kill this guy? 
Yeah, I went up against my parents. That's it. Pretty simple thing. I'm gonna make mistakes and uh, so what's his name going on the way. Young. Yeah. Oh, uh, my name. My name is Marcuse Maloney. Marcuse, you no, know, you know, the, the name of the the name of the dictator. The person we're, you're gonna kill. Uh, oh. I think oh, you, you guys settled on the name Mephialtes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Epialtes. Okay. Uh, Panda, what's your relationship with the Freehold leader? I'm trying to imagine what sort of relationship he would have with a cat. He probably would disapprove of having one that wasn't basically mm -hmm. seen but not heard. Yeah, so... Uh, if he's really rigid in his decorum, then he probably doesn't really like the cat Kuka. Or the alternative... He quite enjoys this nice, controlled whimsy and entertainment. It's a pet. Okay. Uh, what would you prefer? I think the dynamic of him perceiving her as the entertainment and a pet would be interesting to play out. Okay. Neat. So... I will go through the houses, and I will assign him a house later. Uh, Tori, unless you want to be a housemate with this guy. I mean, I could be. Yeah? I mean, I'm the lodge maiden, so that means, like, I'm a strong fighter who... Yes helps take care of other strong fighters of royalty? Yeah, so uh, pretty much what it would be is um, uh, so if you are in a house together it's more expected for you to be allies whereas if you're in separate houses you sort of have the flexibility to move against him. I don't think I live with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's more like, uh, are you of the same family? Is this guy your cousin, and are you expected to get along with him, therefore, or is he your rival, potentially, even if you're part of the same social class? Yeah, because, like, um... yeah, I mean, I'm very much so loyal to him. Yeah, so it's uh, like Game of Thrones. You've seen Game of Thrones, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, so, you know, the Lannisters, not all of the Lannisters lived with each other. So you had uh, Cersei in the palace, you had Tywin uh, at uh, the family seat in their province kingdom. Uh, and so that would sort of be like you guys being in the same house is what that would mean. I don't know if I followed you. Like, uh, um, okay, like so in Game of Thrones, I mean, they're all the. I'm, I'm sorry. Say that again. They're all in the same family, but they live in house, meaning they don't like each other. Yeah, it's possible that you could dislike him, but he'd be like your family. You don't have to like him, but there's right. an expectation that you'd at least pretend you liked each other in public. Yeah, like Tywin hated Tyrion, uh, but, you know, wasn't about to throw him to the dogs. Immediate. Immediate, yes. Um, okay, what I would like to play out is that mm -hmm. I am a loyal person to him, and he enjoys me. Period. Okay. Doesn't well, mean I like him. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's make you allied houses. Does that work? Sure. Okay. So you like this guy, or, or no. at the very least, <laughs> I'm allies with him. Yes. Okay. I'm cool with being a, a very loyal. He likes me because I'm a loyal person to him. Okay, so with your with your houses allied right now, 
uh, that dynamic works. And if he ever does something that just really pisses you off, you can call off the alliance. But until then, uh, sure, you, you work together on stuff. Cool. Neat. Okay, so uh, tell me a little bit about your mortal contacts. And so this could be, but it doesn't have to be mortal family. Uh, it could be your neighbors, people you work for, people you work with, your customers. Um, this could be pulled from real life as well. Uh, yeah, what do you mean by pulled from real life? Well, because we're in the we're in Constantinople, so can we like pull like real life uh, um, like historical uh, people? to say that we knew we know them in the context oh, of yeah. the game yeah go for Super. it okay cool um i um i i think this is i'm not trying to like speak for harry but um i would i would like to know if harry since he's my mentor would he know like one of the main uh organizers and like founders of the assassin's order uh hassan sabah like if he would then this would put us in a better place that we're like close to the top top people within the assassins guild if not it's like it's all depending on who harry's um allies are and who he knows because i'm an un underling to him so i would only know people that he would know i i wouldn't know much people outside of him within the within the assassins uh for, like the assassins group you can know your stuff i'm I'm probably, <laughs> like, Damn, back. I, I'm probably not a, um, probably not super high up. Like, I've probably not had many one-on-one -on -one interactions with, um, the leader of the guild. That being said, I'm probably also not, like, a, an initiate. So my contacts probably extend within the city. Um, probably know heads of local safe houses... Um, couriers, messengers, other assassins. Okay. And, uh, and long, can I ask Harry a question? How long have you been actually in the guild? So I just know. Probably going on a couple of decades. Oh, we're good again. All right, continue. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to give you uh contact within the order uh this is a person uh i like the name noor let's go with noor so your contact is this person named noor and you have uh redone part of your safe house in disguise to accommodate him uh noor only talks to you at night and your room, the room that you have prepared for him, has no windows. Oh. <laughs> what, 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 huh? I'm, I'm so confused. Why would the place have no windows and we talk to him only at night? Why is everybody giving me these little... What is going on? I'm so <laughs> lost. I don't uh, like all of you right now. <laughs> Uh, well, so, um, uh, Rob, you've played Vampire the Masquerade, right? Yeah. Oh, like, like over Asimite. nine years Asimite. Asimite. ago. Yeah, okay. okay, do you remember the Asimites? No. They're oh, like okay. the hot yeah. scene, but a vampire now. Yeah, so, what, no? so when, when they were writing Vampire the Masquerade, uh, they raided the legends of Hasha Sheen to form their own, one of the 13 vampire clans, or the Asimites. Who said? Interesting. I did not know that. Yes. So, uh, that would be why your particular contact, uh, you can only talk to him at night, and he really, really wants a windowless room to hang out in during the day. So, during the day. Oh, oh no, you didn't. <laughs> No, you did. 
that came through. The fact that it took you that long to get that. I'm sorry. I, I, it took me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't I'm even sorry. know anything about Constance, but I knew that was vampire. <laughs> I, I listen. I didn't. I was like, if if somebody, if you see, if you said, oh yeah, they they have an affinity to like silver and garlic, that would have got a little bit quicker. Okay? <laughs> I mean, technically, my character has a garlic allergy. That's because you ate too much garlic when you were younger. <laughs> well, it's because I'm a cat, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, oh, that. I don't know what the food was like back then, but it probably did have a lot of garlic. Avoiding onions and garlic. Yeah, that's, because they, that's gonna be they really didn't preserve cool. anything. <laughs> it's Greek food. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, you see, I'm a foreigner, and our religion demands special diets. It's against garlic and onions. <laughs> oh, question. By yes. the way, um, Rachel, yes. because you said that uh, you said that this was literally it's right after the Romans, and you said it's mostly uh, Christian. With us, uh, with us, uh, assassin, like we're basically more of like a Muslim, a Sunni Muslim sect. Yes. Like, well, are we? Are we introducing that part into the story, or we're we just going to be assassins without without the uh, religious content? So I I sort of was making the assumption that if you wanted to be involved with the order, that you would be at least nominally Muslim. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Just wanted, yeah, just wanted to make sure. Just setting up the world. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and that that will be fun. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, Tori and Panda, uh, how about you? Who are your mortal contacts within the city? I have a mixture of entertainers, um, celebrity chariot runners, and um, society people looking to get attention sometimes if I'm lucky and ne'er do wells and fences. Um, and my position in the city is largely to work with other changeling entertainers who are otherwise misfits and not very good at hiding except for haha, I can juggle. Um, please feed me. Okay, so you are probably running a very eclectic entertainment troupe. Yes, and getting into a fight with other entertainment troops. Because, ow! <laughs> there could be only one plate spinner on this street. Okay, so, uh, turf wars. That sounds like fun. That sounds, uh, like a good reason to want to cultivate, uh, these two assassins. Okay, it can get real serious amongst tightrope walkers. <laughs> You know, well, then you just convince them and they use the tightrope as a garage. Mm. They banned us okay. from the Hippodrome the last time we did that act. Okay. Okay. Tori, how about you? What sort of context do you sort of envision? Um, well, I have retinue. Isn't that something that we talked about? Yes. Uh, retinue is pretty much uh, a bunch of underlings who follow you around and take your order. So for you, they're pretty much like an armed guard. Yes. Um, I think that's all that I wrote down for that but obviously like i'm in the castle or palace ish area i would think i would know a lot of the people who make the rules and would be assuming to become one of those people if i could i know females aren't allowed to really do that uh so let me look up a couple names. Oh, oh yes, Panda. Uh, I am giving you a contact named Malachite. Anything special about Malachite? Uh, you've never seen his face, but he always has good information. Hmm. 
he smell funny? Sometimes, usually. Okay, so, uh, Tori, the way that you want to uh, connect to uh, the palace, um, so there's three different ways you could do it. You could do it uh, militarily, uh, so sort of connect with the people who, who run the armies. Uh, you could do it politically, so sort of uh, the people who advise the emperor, uh, who keep the treasury, and that sort of thing. Or you could do it through faith and religion. So uh, the emperor's confessor, the person who gives him mass, every Sunday. So because you are lodge mistress for the Templars and they're like holy knights for Christ, uh, <laughs> you can, any one of those routes makes sense for you. Yeah. I kind of would think, I guess the political. Okay. Yeah. Po po politics is probably more. Yay, politics! <laughs> okay, let me... Oh, that guy's dead already. I can't use him. Dang. Well, I mean, for purposes of what we're using them for, they very well could still be alive-ish. Yeah, all right. I will give you a contact named Caius. Did you say Caius? Caius, C A I U S. Uh, and he sort of like operates the uh, shadow government, uh, almost like the, uh, you know, he, he's sort of like the power behind the throne. And since you really can't uh, get direct access to the emperor, like not on a consistent basis, you usually go through this guy. Cool. Okay. Uh, last question, uh, and we sort of touched on this a little bit. Uh, what is your individual thoughts on faith and religion? So I, I know, Rob, uh, we mentioned that uh, as Hashashin, it's sort of presumed that you and Harry would be Muslim. Uh, you know, is that something you really want to explore? Or uh, you just be like, that's who I am, and it's not necessarily going to come up a whole bunch? Um, Harry, go. I mean, I'm well, if that's something you want to explore, um more than welcome to i don't know too much about islam so i mean i can do some reading if you want but yeah um, I'm, I'm down okay. to explore it. i'm I not don't... super ready like right now at least because <laughs> i doubt oh, no. research. right now it's just how how faithful uh, do you oh, how faithful and religious do you see your character being and in what faith he's probably well as much as he probably is technically a sunni muslim he's also probably I mean, he's a Bedouin, so he's probably decently superstitious, you know, uh, jinns and all that. Some of the well, sort of mid Puka, it's Middle room Eastern, to be even more superstitious. Uh, would it be animism? No, it wouldn't be animism. What would you call it? I'll look that well, up. if you think there's a spirit in everything, that's animism. It's no, it wouldn't be animism. Have a yeah, not compatible with Islam, not yeah, so much. Not at all. Uh, well, un unless <laughs> you are a very particular branch of Turkish Muslims, mm -hmm. they are oh, not okay, here so yet. So Bedouins were generally Sunni Muslim, um, with a bit of superstition, su mythology, uh, with a unique mythology sprinkled in. That's interesting. That could be perfectly possible, because a lot of religions just basically fold in over top of whatever locals were. Yeah, and... Uh, you know, there's still a lot of folk magic that's part of the faith. Mm -hmm. True. 
Um, I I'm still deciding because, um, just like Harry says, I don't know much about the Islamic faith, but I I am one of those. Tori is like a witness of mine. I'm a like a history geek. Like I just love to just digest history stuff. So mm-hmm. like I could I will tell you guys about like next week because I'll do some research and see and try to. Um, dissect exactly how because i know that at that time because i was doing some research before this and i know at that time there were basically two assassin sects there was the shiites and the and the sunnis so there were two different type of uh, of muslim sects that were actually assassins but it was the, the it was the uh i believe it was the it was the sunnis that, that actually won out so it's like you know just the different types of sects of like different religions and stuff like that at that time it's a lot like harry it's a lot to like digest so <laughs> Give me until next week to find out if I'm one of those people that I'm fully devout or it's that I practice and I'm not okay. fully or it's one of those, oh, I've lost my faith in religion because of the situation that happened within, you know, yeah, my family. And, uh, you know, because you're, you're playing an Italian, right? Yes. Yeah. So uh, a viable route for you would be like as an Italian, you probably would have been baptized Catholic as a baby, uh, and now you come into this assassin sect. Uh, they make it very clear that they expect conversion, uh, but you know they they can't mind read you and figure out how sincere you are. Hmm. And so okay. you know that that might be like. A, a place for you to sort of like explore like you know how how deep do i want to get into this gotcha thank you okay all right uh how about panda and tori um for my character it's sometimes to her benefit to be perceived as the exotic other because it's part of her shtick She's not particularly attached to her um, faith or any sort of identity that way other than the food. Um, She's very much happy to mingle with any sort of person that people would perceive as weird or unusual, but she's also perfectly happy to fake it while she's in the company of other people. Um, Depending on whether or not she thinks she can get away with it, she's perfectly willing to fake a conversion to... um, sneak in somewhere or get better access. Okay. Uh, do you think you would have been baptized as a kid? Um, I think that someone very well might have baptized her and then decided that it was to their best interests later to bill her as um, like the little foreigner who can do tricks and then um, another time billed her as, see, she's been saved and another time, so. Okay, so you're like an Easter Christian. Yeah, um, she knows enough of it, she can go along with it, but if everybody suddenly announced they were doing a different thing, she'd be like, not too traumatized here. Uh, so so tempted to throw Joseph Smith in out of timeline and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> I, I wrote a 20-page paper on Joseph Smith's life once for a course I took on American religions. Oh, oh God, I'm next Mormon. Let's not go into jo- if we're gonna throw Joseph Smith up. Here- oh Jesus, no! God, this is so- he tried to make <laughs> Illinois secede from the Union, but failed because his- the army that was gonna come to defend Illinois from the actual U.S. Army all got dysentery on the way there. Yeah, on the, on, on the Twitch they suggest that Panda could be secretly a Hellenic pagan. Ooh. I think that that's also perfectly plausible, given that she spends her time around misfits and stuff, and that I've been playing her previously in her Welsh incarnation as having a very easy-come, easy-go attitude towards everything's a god, and she remembers talking to another god in her, uh, she's got remembrance. She talked to the Morrigan last time. She remembers the Morrigan. Yeah, so you're just like, I'll pray, see who listens. Yeah, very much a case of whoever picks up the phone gets her service right now. Hey. That is very cat-like. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Tori? Uh, 
as sort of the lodge mistress of the te so here's a cool thing uh as lodge mistress of the templars it's presumed that you would be christian of some kind there are some interesting conspiracy theories that um part of why the templars were expunged from europe was because they had somehow secretly converted to islam There's so many cool conspiracy theories going on. Where did you hear this at? Uh, I've been involved in like reading conspiracy theories since like the 1990s. I don't fair, necessarily Templars believe most... all of them, but they're fun to read about. Yeah, Templars are probably the most conspiracized about group out there. Yeah, they're other a than magnet maybe for who are easily the, the Illuminati. The most conspiracy group out there, bro. Come on, it's the Illuminati. Yeah. Oh, no, they're like, the Illuminati was formed by the descendants of Templars who escaped. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so the Templars... Temp yeah, so anyway, uh, so, sure. uh, yeah, real world, it's a conspiracy theory, uh, there's really no evidence for it, but this is a role-playing game, and we can write reality the way we want it. Hell yeah, why not? <laughs> uh, so you're muted, Tori. <laughs> I wasn't talking yet, but... Oh, okay. Um, um, I think I was just absorbed. And we have a frozen toy. A different one than Christian. I'm, uh, say that again, the internet cut out. Yeah, our internet is complete and utter crap right now. So oh, it's no. really hard to hear anything y'all are saying. So I'm just sitting here being quiet. Um, <laughs> I think you're saying you want me to be Muslim? I'm sort of presenting it as an option. Uh, you could be Christian, you could be Muslim. Either one is possible for you. Uh, you don't have to decide right now. Uh, you know, right now it's just sort of like how faithful, how religious do you see your character as being? I mean, I guess if I'm a Knight of the Templar, I'd be pretty religious. <laughs> okay. Or presumably pretty religious. Yeah, that would make a lot of sense. Uh, and the specific faith is up to you. Uh, but we can assume that whatever the Templars actually believed, uh, you know, you, you totally believe it. And we can probably from the, the fact that they had giant red crap on their dicks. I think you had a cut out there. Yeah, uh, the uh, yeah. You went in and out. Oh, uh, yeah, just basically saying uh, we can sort of infer Templar religion from the fact that they had giant red crosses on their tunics. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I heard something X, and I was like... <laughs> tunics, tunics. Tunics, ah. <laughs> just giant, giant red crosses <laughs> tattooed on their dicks. <laughs> it sounded <laughs> like dicks, I do have to say. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the real I mean, reason this the feed has booted gone out of your rated R. Oh dear. Oh, I mean, it, we already tagged the whole Onyx Path channel. It's for mature audiences. Perfect. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, crosses no. on their giant. Never mind. Okay. Um, I, I, so cool. I thought we were all. Oh, Why is nobody talking? Uh, I'm sorry. I think the internet uh, blipped out. Uh, uh, so, okay. Just, like, one final thing is uh, how did you four reconnect with each other? Oh, so we're already reconnected. Oh, okay. I didn't know we were going to do that. I thought that, that was going to be session one, but oh. okay, let's think. Uh, well, uh, we could do it either way. I'm going to go with I'm using my kitty theme of I remember my past lives. Okay. So if you guys want to reconnect and play, uh, I can definitely make that happen. I think that would be cool. Um, 
since Tori's character is kind of eternal, it would probably, and we've been bumping around the same court, it would make sense I would at least know about her, but possibly not the assassins. Although I would make a good Thai character because they're sneaking around. I know all the ne'er-do-wells and I also know Tori. Mm-hmm. Well, and do we know anything about like how it ended in our past lives? Like, uh, Well, so Tori, you, like- you have not reincarnated. I know. Yeah. So, uh, for for you, there, there's no past life. So you remember, you know, everything. Uh, if you want to be like, I, I saw you die a hundred years ago. Um, you can do that. Oh, so I could make up how they just. Well, I mean, like I, I would, I'd strongly encourage collaborating on this. Just that you would know what had happened. Yeah. Yes. Yes, no. I, I was just wondering if there was any bad blood, any good blood, any where have we been for the past, what, five, 500? How many years has it been? Uh, About 100. All right, so 100 years. I, I don't know how old everybody is. <laughs> this is life two for me now. I did life one, now this is life two. Yes. Yeah, for all of us. Yeah, right, and... but but a hundred years. Is... We're all a so, hundred. Uh, oh no, well, I see what you're so, saying. Uh, so, you know, you're the the mortal aspect of the characters that you were, uh, Tori accepted. Um, that part died within a relatively normal mortal lifespan, uh, and you could have reincarnated again between because it it is a spread of 100 years so you could have another life in between these two uh or maybe your soul just slumbered in winter for a really long time naps yeah that's easy okay so i have not seen um what is your name panda um she was originally going by Mabin, now she's Zakea, because she's a cat. Her name changes by whatever people call her anyway, and Mabin probably wasn't even her real name. Um, <laughs> I'm suggesting that um, in the last incarnation, she had a pretty good run, all things considered, but died in childbirth, which was um, mostly it was banal enough because it was part of her human aspect that it knocked her into a nap for a while. Okay. Uh, tragic and appropriate. Yeah. Euron probably died in some kind of combat. Yeah. Probably getting buried (laughs) under a mountain of dudes. Or one of those scenes where you protected David by standing in front of a, like, a wall of arrows. Yeah, that makes, that, that sounds appropriate. I, I like that. Because in one-on-one combat, you'd have a hard time beating him. Oh, uh, yeah, that was one more thing I wanted to touch on. Uh, Harry, you still have that oath, because those don't break. So my oath is for that is to protect uh, Daffid. Okay. Right? Is that my oath still? Uh, how, how do you interpret it? I mean, if my oath is to protect him, I... Is, he's not in this city, is he? Uh, n- not that you know of. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um. <laughs> so that's my oath. Wonder how that's gonna work out. I don't know exactly how to interpret that. How to spin it into something okay. relevant. Uh. Well. Let's say. Let's see. So there's a couple different ways that we could do this. Um, The first one, uh, how many dots of remembrance do you have? None. Okay, so you don't remember that oath. Uh, It still applies, and at some point, something may or may not happen, which will remind you, like, oh, I have that oath. Well, shit. I guess I'm protecting this random version of poor David. Yep. So, uh, is that something that you want to go with? Sure, yeah, Uh, fuck it, why not? Okay, 
Because um, the other option, uh, and if you like this one better, let me know, would be you are here on a long-term mission that you believe would protect his interests somehow. Ooh, I like that one too. Okay. Perhaps I like that, that long-term mission could have something to do with a threat posed by our dear friend, um, the Tyrant. Okay, uh, so... Or perhaps getting rid of the Tyrant. What is a good long-term mission? So a good long-term mission that probably has something to do with the reason behind why you joined the Hashashin. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it could be that, uh, let's see, the mail car is off the board for right now. But that doesn't mean that other people might not have it in for Davos. That's true. And so, uh, you know, you have joined up with the best assassins on the planet. So, like, okay, well, if I'm part of this organization, uh, uh -huh. I will know if someone takes a contract out on him, and I can be like, uh-uh. That's, well, that's, that's, that's good thinking. That is very good thinking. I like that idea. Okay. We'll go with that one. Cool. So let me write that down into my notes. And of course, like, you taking assassin training means like, okay, well, now I will also learn how to protect him. Yes. I know all the poisons to look for. Yep. Just where to stab. Okay. Uh, and we can say that, you know, you, um, you get, uh, enough communication from Deveth to know that where he is right now, he's pretty safe. Okay. So, he's, he's not in a come-right-now crisis. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. This is really cool. Uh, I ow. really like... I'm sorry? I said, ow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so I think we've done a lot of really good setting building. Uh, is, are there any other uh, elements, complications that people want to explore? Um, oh. I do have the promise to um, give Malakar his due when he comes back, because my conditional support of David was until he, you know, winter comes again and we actually need him. Yes. But I think that's not going to happen this game. It's just something in the side notes. Um, other than that, I think I can add enough chaos as we go. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's have you guys uh so what do you think you're doing during a normal day? Training. Yeah, probably training. resting, training him or um yeah, training him or resting because we probably we operate at night. You have a fantastic day that you do. A fantastic witch? I said you have a fantastic day that you do. You train and then you sleep. Yeah. And then you train and then you sleep again. Okay. Harry, by the way, what is your character's name? Um, Alaspa. Alaspa. Can you spell that? A-L-A-S-F-A. Can we always, like, tag ourselves as our names? Just so I know y'all's names. Yes. Yes. I agree. <laughs> okay uh, so right now uh it is oh what should it be let's say it's uh it's a saint's day that has got the whole city sort of in a party mood uh and this is reflected in the freehold 
and you are having a uh, a really nice gala, or at least you have been invited to one. Okay, so Saints Day, are you still wanting to know what the other people are doing on a day to day, or yes, yes, I'm sorry. No, 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 you're fine. Um, I would say that I am helping other soldiers like myself. That makes sense. Uh, lots of <laughs> thrilling and war games. Eating and sleeping. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so you've been invited to, to Freehold. Uh, a changeling celebration to reflect the the mortal party mood in the city. Say so what is, now? Is this, I'm sorry. Say what now? Can you repeat that one more time? Yes. Uh, so to reflect the mortal party mood in the city, the freehold, uh, the the leader of the freehold has invited you to a gala, which is you know changeling only. Just the mortals are partying. We should party too. Oh well. Uh, well. They all got invited. <laughs> Damn! Why do you gotta say it like that, dude? <laughs> <laughs> they all got invited. Like, I mean, are we supposed to be uh, in deep cover. You're you're currently you're um, currently allied with the freehold leaders. So if you want to snub someone, you can. I don't know if I know that. I I don't know if I know Harry and um, Rob. I forgot Rob's name. No, I was going to say Marcusia. <laughs> it is Marcusia. Marcusia Maloney. She's like, yo. I don't know if I know they're here. I feel like I would only know Panda. <laughs> Unless you want me to know them. Uh, it is up to you. Well, it sounded like Harry was saying he's in deep cover, so. Yes. If uh, I do know them, I think he sucks at, at his job. Well, I mean, it's very easy to hide a giant man with one side of his face scarred, you know? Oh, yeah. is it the same? In, the, in this incarnation, it's not a burn, though. It's pretty, it's an axe wound. So there's like a pretty sizable dent in my skull right there. <laughs> okay, I love that. Oh yeah, and this eye is gone. Gruesome. Okay, so we we all kind of look very similar. Obviously, I look exactly alike, except yeah, it's even despite being an assassin in deep cover, still fucking gigantic. <laughs> okay, so do do you want <laughs> do you want your deep cover to extend uh, to not even the freehold leader knows you're in town? I would. I don't know about Mercutio. That's up to him. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. My, my mentor, I follow you wherever you go. If you want to go into the freehold, then go into the freehold. I would you recommend want to... that, you, uh, that you go to this meeting. Meet people. See, see what you can find. Damn, you just don't want me near you, bro. I... It is That's not that. I am, I am here on a mission. I okay, fair Italian enough. For a sec. I gotta refine this accent. That's okay. So I, I, I will just go off and explore my own then. then. Me and him are not together. So you're I in the free... I'll trail him to see how well he's doing. Savage. Harry's not allowing them to be a couple. <laughs> Aww. I'm gonna trail him. He's like, him. me and him are not together. Fine. Just to see <laughs> how things are going. Like, if he's, I'll tell him to all stay back. But I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna be sneaky. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn on my. I'm gonna press the stealth button. That's just not right, bro. Hey, I'm testing you your, you testing your assassin me. skills. Do you ever feel like someone's watching you? Despite being seven feet tall, I have <laughs> four dots in stealth. True, true. You want me to make a roll for that to see if I can creep behind him and see what he's up to? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, let, it, it'll be an opposed roll. 
Okay. Uh, so that would be your um. I'll probably let's make it wits plus stealth. Okay, yeah, that's one. Uh, versus uh Mercutio's. Uh, let's do perception awareness. Okay, so let me see. My perception is three. Where would uh, my awareness be? Uh, that would be a skill, I believe. Actually, under talent. Uh, talent, uh, yes. No. Uh, okay, so alertness. talent. Alertness. You mean alertness? Yes. Okay, so that's a six in total. Well, yes. Six die. So sorry, my friend. Look but you're going four to four successes. You got to be. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, I so have exactly average so far. I got one eight and two uh two fives. The rest are two zeros and a three. Uh, those zeros are tens. You can re-roll them. So Woo! you very well could detect me. In fact, you why don't I just will. why don't I just leave the ten because it's an automatic success? No, you can at roll on top of those tens. Yes. Oh, Shazam then. Yes. Oh, that's a two. Hold on. I got a pop. I'm gonna hold on. That's another ten. Hold on. That's a uh, six. I suppose I've been spotted then. <laughs> yeah. Yo, with your yeah. big lumbering ass. Come on, dude. You're seven foot tall. Come on. <laughs> Lost the die. He's All seen right. me. God damn it. Well, he's hey. getting better. <laughs> yeah. It's a test. Yep. Oh, that's uh, fine. If you miss, if you're unable to spot the seven foot tall Bedouin following you through the crowd, you get fired immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Al Alfasa, I see you over there. You cannot hide behind the bush. <laughs> I just imagine I'm hiding behind a skinny ass palm tree. Just... <laughs> yeah, shit, he sees me. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Metal boots. <laughs> Be like, I can hear you too, man. Oh, I'm so sorry. So sorry. You are improving. Uh, oh my gosh. Can you, like, would this be like, I'm sorry, but Rachel, would this be like an ongoing thing that he repeatedly tries? So he yeah. tries to hide behind a bush. Oh, I try. I, I, trying... throw te I throw tests at you all the time. Yes. Oh. It's up I, to I, Harry, I, but sure. Like, we'll be I eating imagine, dinner, I, and I'll have, like, slipped yeah. something in your food and see if you notice, or I'll occasionally just throw stuff at you. Dude, I could see you literally coming up to the uh, to the lighthouse in, like, dressed as an old grandma. I'm like, I can tell it's you. I can see your beard. <laughs> <laughs> also, no old grandma's that tall. <laughs> Although this ends very poorly when someone's very tall grandma is grabbed by the scruff of her uh, <laughs> menopause beard and very cruelly. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, now, for the sake the for the sake of of bringing the party together, I I assume that Rosa and Zakea are also going to the freehold gathering. I'm going to the freehold gathering, and at the time when everybody arrives, I'm doing entertainment. Because if I don't do entertainment, then the local lord um, decides to do belly rubbing, and he's very bad at belly rubbing, and he <laughs> refuses to believe he's bad at belly rubbing. I mean, of okay. course I'm there. I'm always there. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. So uh, then a as you sort of make your way there, uh, Zakea and Rosa, you sort of feel something telling you, like, take this street on the way. Uh, and that is when you see uh, a small Italian man and a very tall Bedouin sort of like, it kind of looks like an argument, but not really. Because he's like, you're seven feet tall. Of course I saw you. And, um, and, like... and Alasva is definitely enjoying this. I feel like, like my style. my guard would definitely be like, what the? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, uh, you, you I do, got a sword. Yeah, you do immediately recognize them as fellow changelings. 
Are my guard changelings too? Would you like them to be? So, uh, one one option is for them to be something called kinane, uh, and so kinane are sort of half changelings, as weird as that sounds. So they can see into the dreaming. They can tell when other changelings are around. Uh, and they sort of understand what your life is like, but, you know, they're not changeling themselves. They don't have a seeming, they don't have a kith, they can't cast magic. Okay, that sounds great. As long as I okay. can overpower them. As long as you can what? Overpower them. Definitely. <laughs> Perfect. Then I would feel very good, except, like... I think they're bigger than me because I'm relatively small still. Like, I mean, like, have you seen when like the the little the little granny just decides to tell like her her big strong uh, grandson, you know, what time it is, and they're like, "Yes, granny." Yes. I mean, I, I feel like that's sort of like the dynamic you've got. We're like. She's small, but we're, we're not, we're not fucking with her. We're not. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Acid tongue. And so I think I'll tell them, like, stand down, stand down, because I, I recognize them, actually. Um, is Zakea with me? Uh, Zakea, what are you up to? Um, I would assume that I'd be, um, tra since we're on our way there instead of at the party proper, when this scene takes place, I would be traveling with whatever other entertainers were supposed to arrive there and perform. So I imagine it would be a troop of people, one of whom is wearing half a horse costume, <laughs> another one of which is dressed up for whatever saint this is supposed to be, except the wigs on backwards because they're in a hurry. Yeah, it sounds like you guys are late. Mm. Yeah, so you, you sort of like lead your troop through and you're like, oh, oh, there's some changelings over there. Yes, but we also have a still not completely sobered up one-legged satyr to get on his mark. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you referring to me? No, probably a different satyr. Okay, because I'm like, I'm the three-legged satyr. <laughs> Oh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad y'all caught that. We are <laughs> earning like, that mature audience's I, I rating. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. for the maturest of groups. Our maturity has okay. no bounds. And and sort of uh, at this moment of crossing, um, you know, you sort of notice that the mortal population seems a little agitated. And so, like, there's, like, couriers running back and forth, carrying messages. Uh, and you hear uh, a town crier, a herald, announce uh, that the Pope has just called a new crusade. Fuck. Yay! Oh, and I, as I see the <laughs> Templar, as I see the Templars, my hand is just slowly going to go to one of my daggers. Just the dagger on my belt. I wouldn't if I were you. I seem to recognize you. I do not recognize you. Of course you wouldn't. Poor, poor so, Surprising that you all are together again. Wow. This is freaking me out, like... Just this is what's going on in uh, Alasa's head. This is, he thinks his cover might be blown. Okay. So, uh, Mercutio, he is currently signaling to you to, like, on my go, be ready to just run. <laughs> stand go to down. the rooftops, they won't be able to follow us. Stand down, stand down. R Rob, you're, you're muted. You're having the best time, and you're I'm muted. Just, I'm just laughing at you guys. You guys are just ridiculous. I'm just, I'm here. I am enjoying it. I am enjoying it in the music. All of this is going on. You 
the big one. You cannot understand what the little one is saying. The little one is don't understand what the big one is saying. I laugh at it all because it is all I live in. I am half. By the way, I'm like literally at, because I'm a satyr. I'm like drinking. I'm already like ninety percent drunk already. God damn it! I, <laughs> everything. I'm laughing at everything that's going on. I, I don't think I would re like they don't have any like markings that would show what they were right no I would look just like a Bedouin merchant yeah the first thought that I would see when I saw them would not be assassins I think I'd have an easier time recognizing the troll than the satyr in fact, I think what would most likely happen if the cat saw the troll again, the cat would leap on the troll in a friendly fashion. That's a great way to get thrown, by the way. I will okay. relent to that. I land uh, my feet no matter what. Uh, yeah, so there's this puka who just jumped onto your shoulder. Is the puka in cat form or in... Might as well be in human form, dude. Might as well. It's in human form, and you would have basically been getting, like, a clamber hug is how we describe because you need her across the street. Him? What? So Are you I... glomping him? <laughs> yes. So I immediately He's assume we've been surrounded by, by Templars now. Because I see a group of armed Templars in front of us, and then something grabs me from behind. So I am going to grab this puka and hold my knife to her neck. One step closer, but this one gets it. All right, I think I pull my... Do, do I have a weapon? <laughs> oh, surely you have a weapon. This you is definitely going have a poorly. <laughs> Tori's like, I pull out. Do I have a weapon? No. Don't help me! Don't help me! Please yeah. kill me! I, I definitely, I definitely pull my sword out and say, "Don't, don't try it. That is my cat." <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna look, and once I realize the puka is like not a Templar. No, she is very much not a Templar. I'd be like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, oh, amongst the court, you should not do that to her. You're, you're pretty sure. You've seen this puka before. Yeah, it's not like a, like, I've seen that face somewhere, not sure where. Yes, because, uh, because you have no dots of remembrance, right? Yeah, none. Zero. Okay. Don't you remember the owl arrows? I cried for hours. <laughs> I, I don't know we what you're talking about. We buried you under the about. green dale. Zakea, it seems as though uh, he is still as dense as he's always been. Excuse me. So, Mercutio, how many dots of remembrance do you have? I do not have any dots of remembrance, but I am a childling, so I do remember some of my of my past life. Rachel, where did you okay. go? Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll I'll give it to you. Where? I'm sorry. You froze. You froze. He said, "Rachel, where did you go?" And then. Oh, I'm sorry. There you uh, go. Yeah. Go. So. So I will give it to you that you sort of have this moment of, um, you remember Al Asfa and you remember Zakea, and they didn't look the same as they do right now in your memory, but you do sort of remember Zakea on Asfa's shoulder. Right, repeat that last part. I, uh, you broke up a letter. Sorry. Uh, so you have this memory of Zakea on Al Asfa's shoulder. They they don't look the same in your memory as they do right now, but you know they're the same people. Mm. Ah, okay. <clears throat> Al Asfa, 
Do you not remember your friend, our comrade, our journeyman, the care? Do you not remember Aliaspa? We went through troubles and trials and tribulations together. We must not do. A, sorry. Oh, Rosa, there you go. We must not have all these squabbles. My beautiful Rosa, come here. And I, I come from behind me and I give her a rose. By the way, I'm pretty gangster with the things that I, I'm an assassin. Don't look at me, Rosa. Like you don't understand what I got. To, you don't know how I roll. Don't, don't be shocked that I pulled out a rose. <laughs> yeah, shoot. I pull out a rose to, uh, to calm her down because I do have four dots of charisma. Okay. So I pull out my, my rose. Rosa, please. Calm down. Let's all come together because we need. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if my guard would like you reaching for anything. Oh. Well, are you going to make me roll right now, yo? If they go for their swords, I will activate my skycraft and I will go super but... speed and throw daggers at their sword hilts so that they can't grab them. At this Whoa, particular Rachel. juncture. I'm just going to be doing the dejected cat thing that they do when they're rejected, which is the I didn't want, fine, I didn't want to hug you anyway. <laughs> oh, now I feel bad. So, is, Rachel, is, is, so Tori, are your guards reaching for me while I get hand you the flowers? Well, here's the thing. If you go like this. That's, that's how I'm going, yes. That's exactly how I'm doing it. All right. So your oh, guards, your, your guards will reach for their swords, but they won't draw them and they won't attack without an order from you. Okay, then we're all good. Nothing needs to happen. All right. I already had my knife slash sword out, whatever it is. Um, yeah. So I think when you but guys... they're just waiting for you to go like, as soon as you go like, it's on. Okay. I would not, I, I know who he is, so I would be like, Definitely still having my sword pointed. Um, and then when he has the rose, I don't think I'm amused. I am more insulted. Oh, no. With my four charisma, I have to do something. I'm going to roll for that one. I'm going to game to Yes. Thank yes. you. I'm going to okay. roll for that one. Uh, yeah, let's, let's roll your charisma. Uh, and performance. Ooh. For him, and what do I do? I roll anything? Where's my performance? Um, let's see. I suppose. Oh, I have zero performance. Hmm. I'm trying to think of what the, what the. Allowed to humiliate me, and I feel That's like true. a female guard being offered a rose doesn't seem very. Powerful. Come on, you're a Templar. The male Templars do it to each other all the time. <laughs> yeah, uh, you you Bad could time. play it off as um, you know, he he's giving you tribute. Yeah. Okay. We're definitely in a region where you're seeing the understandings of what you can do with one another being a little fussy. Okay. Okay. Then I, I won't be that upset then. I'm still trying to get a whole grasp of what's acceptable here. Yeah, totally fine. Yeah, you have to understand. I'm a I'm a a, a stranger from a faraway land. Since I am not from this region, I am originally from Rome. So if this is just me being the Roman that I am. I'm always going to offer uh, offer um, love and peace to a woman, no matter what. How many Women and children do you have on you? Huh? Yeah, I mean that that's How many another roses way. Roses are you carrying on you at any given time? <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's like, like a giant bouquet <laughs> in his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody no, wants those it's, roses. It's, it's, it's not like that. It's not like that. But yet again, it's like it's like he's one of those guys. Like every mission, he carries a rose and he carries a dagger just in case the mission ends in peace or ends in murder. You know, type of situation. Well, I'm an assassin. Your really missions end in murder. <laughs> Your missions always end in murder, generally. Hey, hey, but you never know. Assassins, there are times that um, the person can end up uh, not being part of the... 
I know at that time you just kill for kill, but you know, I'm troubled. Okay. I'm brand new. All right, so, so you're offering you're offering Rosa a rose. Yeah. Uh, her are waiting for the order for her. She is not giving. Okay. All right. Now that we are here together, we have to understand. It is time for us to drink and be merry. I feel like I haven't seen any of you forever. Yet again, I do not understand or remember some parts of you, but I know that we are meant to be here, all of us together, here in this place. So, uh, I, walk away. All right. I say I walk away. I'm like, and I'm out. So, uh, <laughs> I'm going to where how, I was. How many dots of grimmery does Alasfa have? Um, currently, I believe none. Oh, one. One dot. Okay. Uh, so you do know that reincarnation is a thing that happens to change things. Oh, so I'm having it like my, my gears are turning right now. Just. Yes. Hmm. Mercutio, okay. you and I you, you and I need to have a word about subtlety. <laughs> I, think, subtlety? I think my character's heading to where she was supposed to go. Because at first I was like, alright, and now I'm like, it's too much with the, we need to be here crap. I don't believe in that. I know where I need to be. I know where I am at all times. <laughs> Mm -hmm. No, when I'm trying to be subtle, I bring out all the cutlery. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to climb, I'm going to scale a building, um, maybe find an alleyway that's thin enough that I can sort of shimmy up using both sides, and follow Rosa from the roof. Stealthily. And shall we roll? Go for <laughs> it. I'm just going to go <laughs> to the Mr. lighthouse, Stealthy. because I Mr. need to be Stealthy on stage like two minutes ago. Uh, so, I'm sorry, Panda, what was that? I'm just gonna go on stage, like, there, because I needed to be on stage two minutes ago, and if okay. I don't get on my mark, we're never going to get both ends of the horse out there in time. That's funny. And it's not as funny when there's only half a horse. Okay, so, uh, you are on stage performing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rosa is making her way, uh, I assume to the freehold? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where we were all going. Yes, okay, just checking. Uh, okay, so your uh, perception alertness versus uh, yeah, I'll ask Do we want to roll that? Let's just, we the could just The glare's bad, but it was a lot of fucking successes. <laughs> okay. I, I feel like I, I'm not even, like, maybe I don't want to roll. Maybe I just want to get to where I wanted to go. If he wants totally to follow fine. That's cool. He can follow me. All good. I'm going... Everybody knows where I'm going. This is the thing. Yep. I have very large dice pools in very few stats. Everything else I have nothing in. Yeah, so uh, so you do manage to tail Rosa uh, to the Lighthouse Freehold. Brilliant. Uh, and I assume Mercutio follows. Will okay. you be following on the street or on the rooftops as well, Mercutio? I'm following. I'm following actually a block down on the opposite uh, on the opposite side of the street, really? so I can't notice. Okay. So by the time, yeah, by the time he gets to the lighthouse, I'm still a couple of buildings down before he I reach the lighthouse as well. Okay, uh, so because we we have run a little over right now, uh, oh, snap. you do yeah you, you do uh, all come to the freehold, uh, and the celebrations are all cut short with the announcement that the Pope has declared a crusade on Jerusalem, or rather to retake Jerusalem. And so, uh, no one really knows what this means just yet. Hmm. 
but we will find out next week. Yeah. Oh, snap. Chapter ending. Alrighty then. Yep. Uh, so thank you all for playing. Thank everybody for watching. Uh, if we all just want to like do our, our normal end of game round table, uh, let's start with Harry. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're up to and yes, uh, where we I should a, follow you. Yes, you can follow me on Twitter at Harry underscore Wyckoff on YouTube. Uh, my channel name is SalubriCat. I've got a new video coming out soon-ish. I'm in the process of writing it. Um, I am the storyteller of the end host of the Saratoga by Night podcast. Tune in. It's a lot of fun. Also, I am starting a new podcast soon called Controlled Chaos, which is a game of uh, wrath and glory. Uh, it's going to be a lot. <laughs> it's going to be chaotic and fun. Uh, yeah, so that, that that's my stuff. So, yeah, take care, people. Okay, Panda, what you up to? What you working on? Well, I have two things I'm super excited about. Canada at Midnight is going to be launching Dark Ages in its beta, but everyone can read it over this weekend. If you're a fan of it, particularly if you got that Onyx Path free Dark Ages book and now you want to see what the LARP might look like, we're going to have that all ready to review. And on the other hand, if you're just looking to play some of the classic World of Darkness games and you don't want to leave the house, remember Canada at Midnight has Northern Winds, our um, lovely little Discord-based chapter. We've been running Discord games across the country since we have to stay inside, but that doesn't mean we can't stay together. Awesome. And, and so to clarify, you don't actually have to be Canadian to join. You do not have to be Canadian to join. You can totally come and check it out. It's our did, um, Northern Winds is for people who do not live near a domain. That's awesome. Uh, Tori, how about you? What you up to? What do you want to promote? Um, this oh, too, no. uh, we're promoting our new page, Bells of Fury, which is um, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook conglomerate type of thing. We like to put out videos. Um, I Love Champagne has been out. We kind of talked about that before, uh, but we relaunched it and we are launching a video interview that kind of gives a little bit more behind the scenes of how Rob put it all together. Um, and then, yeah, uh, we'll be releasing new videos on probably Monday, but hopefully the other video comes out soon. It's just our internet is struggling so it's been yeah. like 68% and it's just oh. rough out here right now. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully they get they get on that for you. Uh, okay. Rob, how about you? What you up to? What you working on? What do you want to promote? Yeah, just like Tori said, um, Bells of Fury has officially launched on Instagram and uh, we're on Facebook. We have our I Love Champagne um, Sure, that just came out. Uh, Vidcast coming out as well. The brand new She Hulk uh, short that Tori has coming out is going to be coming out very soon. Uh, you know, hopefully next week. Crossing fingers, if you guys really want it, you'll get it because it's an awesome short and you guys will love it. So, and we're doing all of that and we're just going to be coming out with brand new stuff, brand new projects because of the quarantine, everybody's inside. So, we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff. Definitely check us out at Bells of Fury on Instagram, on Facebook, and on YouTube, because we're just trying to build everything up, and we want you guys to enjoy laughing, because it sucks being inside, so we're going to try to make you guys laugh. Laugh. Yes. Have fun. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, and I am your storyteller. My name is Rachel. Uh, I will be doing a couple panels. Uh, at Virtual Horror Con, put on by Gehenna Gaming. Uh, that will be next weekend, the 4th and 5th of April. Uh, I'll be talking about things like horror in LARP and, uh, you know, how to run a horror game. So, uh, hopefully I'll also be playing a game, but we will see on that. Uh, also, I am a creator for the Storyteller's Vault. And today I made two of my products, Pay What You Want. Uh, this is to support storytellers who, you know, if you're looking for material on which to hang a chronicle, uh, I did Committed to Darkness, which is a collection of bad guys and plot hooks for you. And I did Forgotten Cairns, which is for Werewolf, the Apocalypse 20th Anniversary Edition, 
it's sacred spaces that need to be reclaimed. So come, get them for free, get them for a penny, get them for however much you want. Uh, and thanks for watching, and we will see you next week. Bye, people.